Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the Everything is Bad New Fangled Motion Picture Show. Nolan. Nile. I feel the need. The need for speed. We're, we're reviewing Top Gun, not speed. That's right, folks. We're back with another episode of the Everything is Bad New Fangled Motion Picture Show. I'm your host, Nile. And I'm Nolan. And ignore any thumps that you hear in the background. Was that your phone? Yes. <laughs> that hit just right. It like reverb like a drum on the floor. Yeah. Um, I thought you were stamping on the floor. At just the right spot. Like must have been between some joists. Yeah. Uh, and like hit it like a drum skin, I guess. Anyway, so yeah, we're reviewing um the is this the longest we've like ever waited for a sequel? Yes. For something? I, yeah. Um, the first one was what, 80, 86? Six? So... 30... 35, 36 years? Uh, 36 years, yeah. yeah. So, how long did we wait between... When, when did um, Beyond Thunderdome come out? Was that before... I don't. I don't know when the. I don't know. Cause like that I th- was. A... I think Tron was the previous record holder. Oh, was it? Maybe. I would. I would have guessed Fury, Fury Road would have been up there too. <clears throat> but yeah, so this movie. Beyond Thunderdome was eighty five. And Fury Road was like two thousand fourteen, something like that, right? So this would have been longer then. Yeah. Uh. So. Yeah, that's quite the gap in time. And I gotta say, so I last week I rewatched Top Gun because I'd only seen the movie like a couple times before and it had been a long time. And I knew it was a cheesy movie, and it's like '80s military action movie. And it's it was super one of cheesy, one of the most '80s movies. Right. Here's ever. what I didn't remember about the original Top Gun: it's just a bad movie. Like. Yeah, I'd di- say like, nostalgia h- helps it yeah, survive but, but a lot. I don't have the nostalgia for it. Right. Because I didn't like grow up watching it as a kid. I don't have any nostalgia for that movie. And so I, I rewatched it recently and I was like, no, like this is not a good movie. I wouldn't say my personal opinion <clears throat> is not that it's a bad movie, but it's not as good as people remember it being. Yeah, like, well, people remember it of like, oh, yeah, it's a cheesy movie, but it's, you know. You know, it is what it is. It's a product of its times, and I'm like, yeah, but it, like, there are products of the same times that are just all around better movies that are cheesy action movies. You know, yeah, like the the all like the classic soundtrack and everything that we all remember about Top Gun. Like the songs feel oddly out of place. Take like, my breath away. Yeah, like the the sex scene in the original movie with that song in the particular intro that song has, it sounds like a porno. Well, yeah, with the like <clears throat> the deep bass and the like the synth, percussion, the synthetic, or the, yeah. the synth bass yeah. or whatever. Yeah, yeah, it's it's super weird and awkward too, like the sex scene itself. And but yeah, so. I gotta say, I was very surprised with actually how good Top Gun Maverick is. Um, Oh, real quick, we're we're gonna do a spoiler-free review before we go much further. We're we're gonna do spoiler-free review, then we'll give you a spoiler warning and go more in-depth into it after that. But I will say this, um, very predictable movie. There's not a lot to spoil. We were calling it way out. Everything yeah, well, that, like, like the... every like turn in the story, we're like, so this is gonna happen. Yeah, well, I mean, that's the... gonna happen. <sighs> Yeah, and the the trailers kind of lay it out for you anyway. You know that yeah. Maverick is called in to go teach a class at Top Gun, and they're gonna have to go on some death defying mission. Yeah, and that's the basic yeah. premise. Of the I whole mean, movie. The, yeah, the final act they don't like they don't show any of that in the trailer though. No, they show some clips of them flying through the mountains. No, and... no, no, like the final final thing. Oh. Like the very like the the final section of the movie, they don't show any of that in the trailer. I remember maybe it was the teaser. There, 
There, is, there was footage I saw of a trailer or a well, teaser. Well, they're flying through the mountains, and that's yeah. not what I'm talking about. Okay. After they fly through the mountains, something happens. Okay. They don't show any of that. All right, well, okay, so the last half of the last act, then. Fine, but, the like, the last chunk of that movie, they don't show in any of the trailers. Okay. Um, but even that was, like, pretty predictable at a certain point. All right. So, um... <clears throat> Yeah, this movie, it even starts off, like, it's it's so weird, like, it, it even starts off with a, like, a modern day recreation of that opening montage from the first film, mm-hmm. where it's, like, all, basically all the same kind of shots, it's set to, um... The same song, but same. they re-did re the song, I think. Did they? I think they might have, I have to look, but I think they remade the song. But, yeah, it's, it's Highway to the Danger Zone. Yeah. And, well, because, I mean, they credited, um... Yeah, that band, uh, or that that guy, I forget the artist. But anyway, so um, yeah, it's like it's even like the same like color palette because it's like at sunset, you know. Yeah. On on an aircraft carrier, specifically the Abraham Lincoln, <laughs> um, except it's all with F thirty fives instead of F fourteens. Oh, but it's like. It's such, like, the same kind of, like, same energy, same sort of shots. Mm-hmm. Um, but it feels weird because that's not where our story starts out. Yeah, it's like, here's this montage. Remember this from the first movie, but it's, like, modern. And then it cuts to Maverick's a test pilot. Living in California. Living in California. <laughs> who's not stationed on an aircraft carrier. Yeah. So, yeah, that that was interesting. That felt like a box they had to check, though, right? Yeah. And it's still, like, like the soundtrack was done uh, by Hans Zimmer, but he reused so much of the score from the original. Yeah, so, as a note to uh, Disney, this is how you do fan service, by the way. Yeah. This movie is a note to to Paramount and to uh, Disney. Right, Paramount's on Star Trek? Well, Paramount made this movie. Oh, they did! (laughs) So what the hell's the problem? Or is it just I the think, Star Trek people? I think it's just the Star Trek people. Okay, well, I think I think Paramount should like call in a meeting with the Star Trek people. It'd be like, have you seen the new Top Gun movie? And then just like slap them all across the face and go, that's how you do a fan service. It's like it's like uh, Mom and Futurama slapping all her sons in one sweep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um... But, yeah, I mean, this movie, like... The premise is fairly cheesy. Some of it doesn't make a lot of sense if you know how things run in the military and you think about it a little too hard. Some things don't make sense. But the first one was even worse about it. So. Yeah. <laughs> um. So yeah, this but uh, lots of cool uh, FA eighteen action going on in this one because uh, obviously they're not going to be flying old f-14s i don't think they i mean the navy probably still has a few but they definitely don't fly those anymore really no so uh lots of callbacks to the first movie lots of cool fan service i i do uh i like the the relationship between uh maverick and jennifer Connolly's character better than Oh. The romance in the first, <laughs> it just feels a little more, yeah, a little bit more natural. Yeah, um, they have better chemistry. They do. Uh, well, I think Jennifer Connelly's like a, a better, better actress. actress. <laughs> so, and to be fair, Tom Cruise is a much better actor than he was in that movie too. Oh well, yeah, it's been a while. He's had yeah. a chance to improve his skill. Right, but it's like Tom Cruise is one of those actors that you've, as long as you can remember, he's just been a good actor. Mm. But then I watched. You know the first one recently, and I was like, "Ugh." It's only like his third movie, or no, something. No, I'd like. Though. I I mean, I didn't. I don't fault him for it. Like, I understand it was very early in his he was career. He's like twenty years old. But it's like you think about what you think of Tom Cruise now, and like he's an exceptional actor. You know, like he you know, he he does like great action, does great line delivery, like can show like a huge range of emotions now. And then you watch that movie, and you're like, "All right, well, he'll get there." <laughs> you know. Well, I like I appreciate Tom Cruise because he puts his all into every movie. Yeah, 
No, his goal is is to make every movie he's in like as exceptional of a movie as he possibly can. Yeah. Which is I I respect that and I mean anyone working in Hollywood but you know especially in an actor who like is as big as they are. Yeah. Is like you know he in some cases he definitely could could get away with phoning it in. Um and you never really seem to do that. No. But I think it helps that he's produces like all his movies now. Yeah. Like every movie he's been in for a long time he's produced. Yeah. So the I will say that the um the dialogue feels a lot more natural in this movie. Like a lot less like they really toned down the the fighter jockey bravado. Yeah. It, I mean it's still there. Yeah, but it it feels a lot more natural. Yeah, like the the scene, there's a scene where they're all gathering, where you first see all the pilots, and they're all gathering in a bar, and a lot of that's in there. I mean, it's a big dick measuring contest. Yeah, that, that's what it, what it amounted to be, but it was, uh, but they all kind of backed off a little bit after that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, uh, I mean, as you've probably seen, like, it's almost all practical yeah, like the the jets well, and everything is like we were talking about this morning. I like to imagine that there was a phone call from Paramount to the Navy, and the Navy said yes before the end of the sentence. Yeah, you know, like they heard the word Top Gun and just said yes, and didn't, you know, not didn't need to hear anything else. I will say the first time you see this movie, it should be in theaters. Yeah, maybe even splurge for IMAX or the xd depending on like what theater chains you have around you right because of the just the size you want to see this but also the the sound quality yeah like to hear it all it's uh it's pretty impressive and you're gonna lose it a lot seeing it at home on your because smaller screen like i'm gonna be honest that's the real appeal to the movie is the the fighter jet stuff you know yeah like that, because the story is the story is minimal, very basic. Yeah, the story is the minimum it needs to be to to tell a story with as much aircraft right as you can. Yeah, and that that's like the point of it. Uh, they even pulled back, like like I said, there is a little bit of a love story with Jennifer Connelly, but it's not nearly as much as it was. It's also not as creepy. Yeah, and it's not nearly as much screen time dedicated to it as in the first movie. It's there in the background, and it makes sense, and it, but it's not like taking up yeah. nearly so much screen time. That love story in the first one, like looking back on it, mm -hmm. uncomfortable. <laughs> like she says no to him several times. He follows her into the women's room, and then she's like, "Well, okay, since you followed me into the women's room." Yeah. yeah. Essentially, you know. I feel like that puts unrealistic expectations on men. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and then I, I really, I really like um, Miles Teller in this movie too. Yeah. Which I generally like Miles Teller. He's been in some roles I haven't cared for. Yeah. Uh, Fantastic Four. Like Fantastic Four, but. Was that Fant Force Stick? Yeah. Okay. I I have never had a issue with Miles Teller. I like Miles. I've always liked Miles Teller. Yeah. But yeah, I think he did a really good job as uh, Goose's son. Yeah. Rooster. Rooster. In this. Um. And oh, and that that's another thing too. Is like I think this movie like does a pretty good job of like hitting you with some feels too. Yeah, it does. Um, you know, especially for the movie that it is. Right. Uh, so, I, you know, I think they, they did a pretty good job with all of that. Yeah, I definitely, I really enjoyed it. Yeah. I, I had a lot of fun watching it. Um, nice so, escapist sort of movie. Yeah, and what's one thing that's nice for anyone who's, like, familiar with such things is they actually use, like, aircraft that exist. Mm -hmm. Um, they never named the fifth generation fighter that right. they're so worried about in the movie. Just like they never named the country that it's from. Right. Like, but in the, which is weird to me, because it's like in this one, they used 
an actual aircraft. I mean, granted, it was a 3D rendering because obviously, like, the Navy doesn't have access to SG 57s. We assume it's a 3D rendering. No, I looked into oh, it. Oh, you did? Uh, yeah, okay. it is. Okay. Um, because they don't have access to that. Well, no, I know they play. They're, they're too busy having all of their shot down in Ukraine right now. Yeah. Um, it, well, I, I say all. I think they've had one shot down. But anyway, so they, um, you know, so like it was a computer rendering, but they like I, they do a good job of using aircraft that exist in this movie. Whereas in the first one, their dogfight was against the MiG twenty eight, which doesn't exist. It was a real aircraft. It though. was a real aircraft. It was an F five. F yeah, it was a, like a training. It's a, it's like a Top Gun training plane. Yeah, it's a plane they normally used for for being op four. Yeah. Um, at the Top Gun school anyway, but yeah, they're just painted black with a red star on the tail. Yeah, I mean, it was supposed to be a stand-in for the MiG-29, which was the big, like, you know, concern at the time. Yeah. Because, like, we hadn't had any of our planes directly fight the thing. Um, so it was like a big boogeyman of the sky. But the... Yeah, the uh, they use an SU-57s in this and but they just don't call it that which i thought was a weird choice because like you use the actual plane and you never yeah. mention what it is yeah so i don't know, I don't know just a weird choice i thought um but yeah uh i don't know you got anything else to add it's a good movie it's got an 8.7 right now on imdb and i think it deserves that it's making all the money all the money right so now. so much money uh, biggest opening weekend for a Tom Cruise movie, right? Yeah, biggest opening weekend for uh, Memorial Day. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's. I think it's it's uh, and it's beating Doctor Strange's opening. I think. Yeah, I can. Which see was that. just kind of. Not bad, but not not as big as other Marvel movies. Yeah, go check out our review on that to get our full rundown of that movie. Yeah. All right. So, uh, how about a spoiler warning? Spoiler warning. So, um, I really liked the inclusion of Al Kilmer in this. Yeah. Um, I just I thought it was cool because it's like he's not really in a position to be acting. No, well, like my understanding is he can't even speak. They had to, they had to use samples of his voice to create the dialogue. Well, they like used an AI that took like a bunch of recordings of his voice, and was able to recreate his voice saying those words. Right, and he was just mouthing the words because he doesn't. He's had surgery to have like his larynx removed or something. Something. Yeah, he had throat cancer. So I just think it's. I think it's really cool though that they found a way to have him in this movie because it's a you know it, like it, it's obviously a huge deal for Tom Cruise. It was also a big deal for Val Kilmer. Yeah, they were both you know pretty young, and then their careers just took off after that. Yeah, so I, I think it was really cool that they found a way to to have him in there like that, and it worked for the story anyway. Yeah, because um, uh, shortly after that scene, so so Val Kilmer becomes. Uh, he's like a three-star admiral, right? Is he the admiral of the Pacific Fleet? Yeah, he was com- he was a commander of the Pacific Fleet, mm-hmm. and so he's basically the one preventing uh, Maverick from getting kicked out of the Navy, like through his whole career, apparently. Yeah, Val Kilmer or Iceman is the one preventing Maverick from getting kicked out of the Navy, and they actually, you know, because like at the end of the movie, like they're buddies, you right? Know? Like you, you don't like shoot down a couple of MiGs together and, and not, not be, be best friends. friends. You don't say you can be my wingman anytime. <laughs> yeah, and not, not... And not be friends. Yeah. So, yeah, like, he he mentions that he, he feels that as much as a loose cannon as Maverick is, they need people like him in the military to do those sorts of jobs. Yeah. And uh, so he always protected him and you know, every time he was going to get in trouble get a phone call from admiral i don't know iceman's real name but is it like uh 
Tom Kaz- Kazansky. Kazansky, yeah. Yeah. I, wa- I was like, I wanted to say Kazansky, but I was like, that seems too close to the director's name, Kaczynski. But I guess that's just a... Just a coincidence. coincidence. Right, and then he, he goes to see him, and they have a touching moment, um, and they hug it out, and then shortly after, Iceman dies, and so we have a funeral scene. Yep. And which is also, you know, dear touching. Drinker. Yeah. And uh, there's like a total press F to pay respects moment. And they have the, uh, was it the, the missing, what's that formation called? It's only it's like the the flyover. Yeah. With the and then the of... one the one goes the one plane breaks off and. Yeah. I forget what it's called. Missing man formation or something like something that. Something like that. And it's specifically for. For fighter pilots. For fighter pilots. Yeah. yeah. Um. But it's. Yeah, it's like it's this whole touching moment. But I just you know I think it was cool that they found a way to get him in there. And like I said, it it's good for the like it worked well for the story. Um. And then, uh, you know, this one, like, all the acting, I think, was actually pretty good in this movie. Uh, had John Hamm in it, which I like. Anytime John Hamm gets to be included in anything, I'm all for it. Um, there was... There, there are some things, though, that, like, don't make sense from just, like, military standpoint. Like, this warrant officer that just follows Maverick around. Yeah, it's like weird. Everywhere Maverick is stationed, there's this warrant officer, Hondo. It's his like nickname or nickname, call sign, whatever. Presumably, um, he's a just a big fan of the Clone Wars. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, there like so. There's that. There's the fact like they have a very contrived Death Star trench run scenario oh, yeah, the- to explain why this has to be done in F-18s instead of just doing it in an F-35. Yeah, so this mission to take out some, like, nuclear facility, like, where they're refining... They're refining uranium-235. Right, so it's it's in this, like, valley between these mountains, and the only way there that avoids the air defense systems in place is to fly through this canyon real low like within a few hundred feet or something of the yeah, ground like below 300 feet yeah and then you fly and then you go up over this mountain and then the first fighter has to blow open the the, the ventilation vent. Shaft, and the next fighter has to fire a missile down the shaft that's three the, meters wide. The small thermal exhaust port right beneath the main port. Yeah, is that the one? Yeah, okay. uh, this one is the size of like two and a half womp rats because it's right. like three meters. One, one and a half womp rats. One, excuse me, yeah, one and a half womp rats. Yeah, because it's three meters. And then they have to fly. Then they have to climb out the other side, up this extremely steep mountain, pulling so many G's that they're probably going to black out, and then avoid the AA on the other side and possible enemy fighters. Right. Well, and they, that's the thing is they had to fly the canyon really fast because um they they didn't want you know they, they needed to make sure they got through before the enemy had time to get fighters inbound. Yeah. Um and uh, those fit those pesky fifth generation fighters. Right. Because they were knew they were going to be there because they started off by launching missiles from the carrier to take out their airfield nearby. Yeah. So then the only fighters that would be available were the ones that are already in the air, but they're going to immediately figure it out and go towards the uh, the facility. Yeah. So, yeah, it's this long, super fast Death Star trench run with twists and turns and then shooting two missiles down the thermal exhaust port. One to open up the port. The best, the best part is uh, how uh, Miles Teller like, turns off his targeting computer. He didn't have the laser, right? Oh yeah, the uh, because yeah, the guy because it's it's they're done in pairs, and there's like one plane that has the laser targeting right system that ceased working, and then the other one has the missile to follow the the laser. Yeah, and so Miles Teller just did it by eye, right? Because Maverick had already blown open the port. Which okay, so I was like, I was I was on board with the plan. I'm like, okay, 
you know, it's very contrived, but it makes sense for a movie, especially this kind of movie. So you gotta, it's like, you gotta hit it with a missile, blow it open, then you gotta hit it with another bomb and, and detonate it. But Maverick's bomb just goes through the vent slats and into it anyway. Like, yeah. So what? That didn't destroy it. No. <laughs> just impacted on the surface. Yeah. Uh, and then you know they've got to fight their way out. So the the part I was, yeah. So they they get out the other side. Then there's like a whole sequence of them like dodging all this uh, AAA going on, and um, the part that I was talking about that they don't show in the movies at all is how uh, Maverick gets shot down, saving Rooster's life. Right. Because Rooster uh, ran out of... He he had used all of his flares, and so Tom Cruise, or Maverick, flies in and uh, does a a Cobra maneuver over the top of Rooster's plane while launching flares or something. Yeah. Or no, that... No, that's even the first time, and then he like took a missile form the second time, right? Something like that. Something like that. It was a very hectic scene. There's yeah. a lot going on. Maverick gets shot down, and they're all ordered to return back to the carrier. But Rooster sticks around to save Maverick from behind helicopter. Yeah, and then he also gets shot down. And he also gets shot down. So the two of them have to escape, and so they make it to the air base and they steal an F-14. Right, which. Makes sense, like, because it would have been a Chekhov's gun situation, because the they mentioned, like, they're talking about all the assets at this airbase, and they're like, ah, oh, mostly fifth generation fighters, but even some older stuff, even some of our old F-14s. Right, which implies, maybe this is Iran? I, I would it's have an to, amalgamation of a number of countries, actually. Yeah, so I would I would have to double check. I know we sold Iran a bunch of F4s and F15s. I honestly don't recall if we sold them any of our navy craft. But uh, I mean, yeah, we we sold off those, you know, our uh third generation fighters to a bunch of countries. So yeah, I guess you know, it could be Iran like but, but this it, is like this the is where shot like, it looks like Russia. Right, it's the, like very alpine mountain. Lots region. of snow. Lots of snow, pine trees everywhere. So, uh, and all, and it has the to hind. have a coast. It has to have a coast. They have and, a hind. And, <laughs> they had a hind. Well, and and the thing too is uh, when I was like, well, it just based on the equipment, it literally can't be any country other than Russia because they have SU fifty sevens. Right. And they're the only ones flying that. Yeah. But again, they never name the country. Right. It's uh, a, they call it a... Uh, a rogue nation. A rogue, a rogue state. A rogue state, yeah. Yeah. So, um, they, and so yeah, they go and steal an F-14, which miraculously has ordnance on it. Yeah. But no radar working. Or the, the fuse is blown. Or pop. Or I guess it was breaker. a breaker. Yeah. The, the breaker, breaker was popped, so they had to find that breaker. But, yeah, so, like, there's this, you know, there's this whole, like catchphrase basically through the whole movie like it's not the plane it's the pilot and i'm like i understand that to a point but it's also the plane but it, a lot of it's the plane and i really don't see an f-14 shooting down two su-57s felons i think is what that plane is called yeah. you shoot down two or just one because you shot down two you shot down there was a third one though that hangman shot down. the last one hangman shot down yes um yeah he shot down two yeah he shot down two but he got the drop on him because, like, he probably wouldn't have shot them. He had a harder time because he managed to get the drop on him. Yeah. Uh, because they thought that it was an allied plane. Right. But once it be once it came down to a, just a dogfight between him and that other plane. Yeah. I I really don't see you being able, especially one that had apparently like half working avionics. I just don't see it happening. But it is a Top Gun movie, so I'll forgive it. Uh, yeah. And it is Maverick. Yeah, so, like, th- things, though, like, we're, we were talking about how predictable the movie is. Like, things that were super predictable is we were, like, like, during the training, we're, like, all right, so something's going to happen, and we know Tom Cruise, I mean, we know Maverick's going to fly this mission. It's Because he's supposed to just be training the team that's going to go fly the mission. Yeah. And we're, like, well, we know something's going to happen, happen, Maverick's going to fly the mission. And then when the, there's, like, you know, the team can't get it, can't get it right, so they're they're doing all these simulations of, like, 
you know, flying through the mountains, and then the climb, and then the, the hitting with the bomb, and all that. And the team can't get it, the team can't get it, and then Admiral John Hamm, Cyclone, um, basically removes Maverick from the pro from the training because he's like, well, Maverick's emotionally uh, compromised. Compromised, that's where it was. Because of his emotionally connection to Rooster. It was, well, no, his, his connection to, because it was after Iceman died. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. And so, um, you know, he's emotionally compromised because of his connection to Iceman. And also, Iceman was the only one protecting him. Right. So now they can get rid of him. Uh, and then, so he basically changes the mission parameters to, the, to such that the pilots all realize they're not expected to survive this mission. Right. He, basically, he extends the time for the mission, which makes it easier for them to get through the canyon. But it's going to it's going to wind up where the enemy fighters are going to be on top of them. Yeah. And so while this is happening though, like, like they're talking about like all this is going on and, and you know, they're talking about like, Oh, you know, this is, you know, we're not going to be able to get out of there before the enemy fighters show up. But I, I just leaned over and I was like, Maverick's going to fly this and make and do it. Right. Yeah. And he's sh- like, sure. Shit. He did it. Like, you know, there's like an alert that someone's running the training course and they're like, who is that? It's like, of course it's Maverick. Yeah. You know, and but I'm then, like, how did that plane get off the ground without, you know, any yeah, of the like, people in this Maver- room knowing this happened? Like, how is Maverick so good at convincing ground crews to, like, fuel up and load up ordnance onto planes that are not supposed to be in the air? Gives him that thousand, thousand watt smile. Yeah. Uh, and then, like, the... like We, when, pre- we predicted what crew he was going to pick yeah because it was the ones that had all the screen time we were like so these these people are are all going to go on the mission and hangman's going to be the reserve right but then hangman's going to come out of the very end right and then when, once like when they're on their way back to the carrier and they're having to deal with the fighters i was like hangman's going to come in and save them before they get back to the carrier because they keep cutting back to hangman asking for permission to launch to go escort them back right. and keeps getting denied i'm like yeah hangman's going to show up and save them at the end um and then, like when when Maverick got shot down, I was like, "Rooster's gonna come back." Yeah, you know. I also and- predicted that Maverick might. I predicted Maverick would save Rooster, and I guessed he would die. I was wrong about the death part. Yeah. And then, like once they were both on the ground, you know, and it's like, oh, they got to figure out how to get out of here. I was like, well, there's that F-14, yeah. those F-14s at that air base that they mentioned. Right. You know, it was just so much stuff that was just, like, super predictable in this movie. It didn't really matter, though. No, it didn't. Cause it didn't take away from the enjoyment of the movie. No. So, uh, yeah, highly recommend you see this movie, though. I mean, based on the numbers I've seen, you probably already have. Yeah. If you're watching a review and wondering whether or not you should see this movie, you've probably already seen it. You're just looking for validation of your own opinion. Yeah. <laughs> Um. Oh yeah, and so Maverick shot down his two, his two uh, enemy fifth generation fighters in an F fourteen there at the end. That's so giving him five kills, and making him an ace. So, I and I personally think that those two kills should count as like two each because that's quite the feat. Yeah. So, uh, anything else you got to add to that? Uh, no, I don't think so. All right, cool. So our next movie we're going to review is Bob's Burgers movie, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, which should be coming out, what, tomorrow? Uh, Day after this one launches, probably? Probably. Okay. Um, I think the next movie we're seeing after that is Jurassic World. I think yeah. so. Yeah, and then that's in two weeks. And then L- Lightyear. Definitely more excited for Lightyear than Jurassic World. Yes. It looks like a really cool like space opera. And I love movie. me some Jurassic Park, but only that first one. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then we've got Thor Love and Thunder in July. As well as there's also, yeah, Bullet Train. Kind of sucks. Like, there's not more than a movie like every other week now for until like winter. Yeah, there's hardly even trailers out. Uh, several movies we've gone to there's only been a few trailers yeah like we might see this the man from toronto 
because like got Woody Harrelson and Kevin Hart in it. And there's just literally nothing else in August. Uh Yeah. Oh man. Yeah, there's just nothing coming out, man. Yeah. What do well. you do? It sucks. Avatar 2. No, wait. That's not till December, right? Yeah. So, I guess we just suffer. Black Adams this year. Black Panthers this year. 2, that is. Creed 3. Which I haven't seen any trailers for that yet. I haven't either. That's in November. You'd think we'd start seeing some teasers for it by now. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um. Yeah. So. Uh. This was like the last thing to be excited about for the year, I guess. Guess so. Uh, like real excited for. Anyway, I mean, Bullet Train looks cool. So yeah. I guess until next time. Yep. Oh wait, real quick. Uh, so come back, check out our other reviews for what there is upcoming, even though it isn't much for the rest of the year. And also go check out our other reviews. What was our last review, Nolan? Doctor Strange, in the Multiverse of Madness. You were on it this time. Yep. So, uh, yeah, go check those out. And until next time, thanks for listening. Bye. Toodles. <laughs>